In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I have two exclusive one-on-one interviews for you. I recorded these interviews in Chicago last week at the NBA Combine. The first one is with Max Lewis. Sat down and watched him work out on the campus of University of Illinois, Chicago. And the second one is with Dylan Jones, a guy that has literally come out of nowhere and put himself in position to be drafted. So here's an opportunity for you to get to know two NBA prospects that were in Chicago last week that have totally different stories but are looking to make a big name for themselves. Stay tuned. Big, big shout out to each and every person that's made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. And this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That is prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And I am back at home in Dallas after a long, long week in Chicago, but it was a great week. I really got a chance to sit down and talk to a lot of people and got a chance to meet some prospects. So I have some interviews coming up where I like the storytelling part. I like hearing, as I call it, each prospect's path to the draft. And path to the draft. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody has like a, a story to tell and everybody has a unique path to the NBA. Not everybody was like a five-star recruit or you know, highly touted and and considered to be the best in their age group when they were like 12 years old. There are some guys that just kind of have this underdog story. And those are the guys that I'm a little bit more drawn to. And the first interview is with Max Lewis. And Max had an absolutely phenomenal workout when I went to watch him. I was impressed with the shot making, even though it was one on none but just the ability to handle the fluidity, the athleticism, and he shot the lights out. I mean, he really shot the lights out. And after his workout, I had a sit-down interview with him, and we just talked about his story growing up in Las Vegas and his unique journey to the NBA Combine and in a few weeks, the the NBA Draft, which I am almost certain that he will be a first-round pick. All right, so here is my interview with Max Lewis. All right, we're here in Chicago. Do you, do you prefer Max or Maxwell? I've heard two different Max things. is fine. Max is fine? Yeah, Max Lewis. All right, we're here in Chicago with, with Max Lewis. Tell me about this this week in Chicago, this experience for you. Uh, this week in Chicago has been great. I'm really blessed and just thankful to be here with uh, with other top guys, just, uh, just to know I'm just as good, even better. Can be even better than uh, those guys, but um, I'm just blessed and thankful to be here. Speaking of being better, at this point, do you feel like you're you're underrated because you went to a school that was kind of outside of the limelight and your team didn't have the best record? Right, yeah. Um, I do think guys probably think I'm underrated and not as good as people really know me that know my game. But um, I understand it's because I went to Pepperdine. And if it was vice versa, if I'm a dude that goes to Duke or Kentucky and I go against the guys from Pepperdine, I might underestimate them as well. So I, I already know. So tell me a little bit about your, your background. You're from Vegas, and right. you don't have a traditional path. So tell right. me a little bit about your path to the right. path so, to the draft. Uh, yeah, I'm from Vegas. I got five siblings. I'm the youngest out of five. Um, I went to a little small, a little art charter school, and then I went to Clark for a year just to play JV because in Vegas, the rule is when you transfer from a school to school, you have to sit 180 days. So I was a junior playing JV. And um, Arizona Compass came. Um, I played there for my uh, last year. Um, and then I went to do this uh, train for a year just to be a pro. COVID happened, didn't work. And then I went to Pepperdine. So yeah. Who's on your team at Arizona Compass? Uh, my team was Frankie Collins, Siri Lewis, um, Jabari Walker, Josh Primo, Sincere Parker. It was a lot of five stars. It was really deep. Yeah, I figured that that team is the team is always loaded. So, what made you decide to do the the year training as a pro? Um, I just felt like at the time I was uh, I thought I was ready, and I felt like 
my game was ready for the NBA. I feel like I just, my game is just an NBA style play. And looking back at it, did, well, what did you learn from that experience? Um, I just learned to just keep your head down and keep working. Um, opportunities not going to come when you want them to, so you just got to keep working until it comes. And um, I kept my head down and working, and then opportunities came. So here we are three years later. You're here at, at the Combine, so it's kind of like delayed gratification. So when did you first start playing ball? Okay, I started playing basketball around, like I always played, but seriously, I would say around like 14 years old. Um, and then I start, I got introduced to Dream Vision, and I started playing 15U, 16U, 17U, and then, yeah, so maybe it's been like five, six years, maybe six, but five for sure. So you're somewhat of a, a late bloomer. Yeah, for sure. So that means there's still a whole lot to, you know, just a whole lot of room for growth and improvement. Right, a lot of potential. And speaking of that, when I watched your film last year, and it's not a knock on you, I felt like you were hooping, right? Right. You were more talented than everybody else, but you were just hooping. And right. then this year, I feel like you've mixed the, the hooping with a little bit more structure. What was last summer like for you to get you to the point where you are uh, today? I just feel like I just wanted to be the best version of myself coming into my sophomore year. So um, I was just watching a lot of film with Coach Romar and just in the gym for countless hours, just getting up a lot of shots and just uh, locking in on my game, just getting ready for that season. When I watch your film, I see a guy that is very confident, but also creative with the ball. Not a lot of guys are creative, and I think in today's NBA, there's a lot of guys that don't have to be creative because you can make a, a living being a three and D right. that just stands in the corner. But you can do a lot of things with the ball, step backs, to the point where when I watched your film last year, I feel like you took a lot of bad shots because you were so confident. Yeah. Where does the confidence come from? Is it just natural or you just feel like I put in the work, uh, I work on these shots? I just think that's my personality off the mm -hmm. court starting off and then on the court it's, it's like, and especially like, I know I was the best player at Pepperdine, so um, if I'm making shots, then my coaches, as long as you make shots, you can do what you want, but you got to make shots and it, and it got to be in Pepperdine style of play. So just having Coach Romar trust me, that gave me a lot of confidence and uh, just having the guys trust me as well, that, that helped too. So you got off to like a crazy start yeah. to start the season. How different were the looks that you were getting once teams started focusing their defense on you? Um, it was crazy because like we played Gonzaga in December and then like we played Santa Clara and after that it just it got a little tougher because I was getting double teamed, um, triple teamed. Everybody just just was watching. I heard they were just watching countless hours of film on me during pre uh, my preseason because I was playing really well in preseason. But um, they were just studying me really hard and it just got a little tougher along the way. Yeah, I like to put things in the context. When I see people say, oh, he didn't have that strong of a second half of the season, but yeah. they're leaving out the fact that every defense was geared to stop you. Right. You said you were double teamed. What are, what are some other looks that you were facing on, on defense, or how were they defending you different in conference play? Um, Because in the preseason, I remember I used to always get it on the block, and I'll just get easy buckets on the block. And then um, I start doing spin moves, and it was working, and then like two games later, I'll spin move, and then it's a guy right there yep. hitting me, and then it, it's just always another guy coming. So I had to adjust, and it, it was it was tough for sure. Now, where did you get your offensive creativity from as far as just being able to create your own shot off the dribble, create space? Right. Is it something you worked on, or is it something that just kind of came natural to you from just playing like pickup or one-on-one? -on -one? Right, uh, I think it was a little bit of both. Um, just natural, just doing it. I feel like that's really a main reason why I feel like I'm a, I'm a potential NBA player because it just came natural and I just I always been doing it since I was young but not really paying attention to it and then I just was getting a lot of reps just practicing it when I was um, starting off playing basketball. Just My dad used to just take me to the gym and just get shots, just shots. We wouldn't even mm -hmm. dribble, barely do anything, just shoot, shoot. So. All right, so growing up, did you play a lot of one-on-one? -on -one? Because your, your scoring instincts scream like one-on-one -on -one or just playing more than sitting in a gym training against cones and, and in an empty gym. Right. Um, so when I was younger, I used to always go against my brothers, being the youngest out of uh, three brothers. So um, I always had a basketball goal outside my front yard, and we used to just always play like from 12 o'clock till nighttime. We just play all day. 
I, even though I would lose, but I'll have my moments where I'll still do my thing. But uh, I feel like that's where it all started, just playing one-on-one -on -one and just, just having fun. It makes sense, because I can always tell a guy that played a lot of one-on-one -on -one because of the instincts and the creativity, but then now it even makes more sense that you are the youngest right. playing against older brothers. I'm the oldest, but I have a younger brother. His game was totally different. He right. had a lot more confidence right. because he was going against me. He's like- It's always the younger one. Yeah, he's like seven years younger than me. All right, when we return, I have more from Max Lewis, but I want to give you, yes, you, the listener, an opportunity to become a millionaire. We have a new $1 million Daily Flex promotion on prize picks it's for the NBA playoffs and the finals, which it seems like the finals are going to be here before we know it. I mean, it's two series up 3-0, could be two sweeps, but every day during the NBA playoffs and finals, one prize picks user will get a chance at becoming a millionaire. One entry placed after 8 a.m. Eastern will be randomly selected each day. Whoever placed that entry will be given a six pick flex with the following payouts. If you get six picks correct, million bucks. Five picks correct, 80,000. Four picks correct, 16,000. Now the full details can be found at prizepicks.com slash million. But you must opt in at this link to be eligible for the million dollar entry. And once you opt in, all you have to do is play the game like normal and you could become the lucky winner. Could you imagine a million dollars? Like a million dollars. Oh man, what did you do? Oh uh, man, I just got some picks correct on prize picks. So, I mean, that would, that would be pretty cool for me. All right, and if you're wondering what is this prize picks, it's daily fantasy made easy. And all you have to do is pick two to six players and if they will go score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections. And Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch: NBA, NFL, NHL, PGA, esports, WNBA, cricket, boxing, MMA. I mean, the list goes on. And the entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. It's safe. You can get your money out fast. And it is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So all you have to do is download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com, sign up to play daily fantasy sports. If you are a first time user, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100, but you gotta use the promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. So do not forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Once again, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. So let's talk about this pre-draft experience. What's a typical day like for you and where are you working out at? Um, so being at Impact, I get there around around like 8.30, start my workout around 9 o'clock. The first workout is like an hour 40 minutes. So um, after that, I get, on, get in the weight room work out with uh, T. Scott for like 40 minutes. And then I get a protein shake, a little meal plan. I eat, let it digest for a little bit, and I get right back on the court for about an hour, just get some shots up, and I go home. It's like a it's like a nine to five almost, so. Yep. I, I hear that you are 207 now. Yes, sir. And what did you start off at the beginning of the summer? Um, so after the last game, I weighed in, coming back to Vegas after the tournament, I was like 192. Mm -hmm. And so I'm 207, 208. So I, I gained some good weight since uh, since I first got to Vegas till now. You still look like you got all your bounce and athleticism. Yes, sir. What has it been like working out at, at Impact? I know there's a lot of competition there, a lot of guys coming in and out. What have you learned from working out with the guys at Impact? And then right. who are some of the guys you've been working out with? Right, being at Impact is great. Um, it's the top guys in the country that come in there every day. Um, it's the best. I feel like you can't get no better work than at Impact. And the guys I've been working out with is uh, from the Trailblazers, Keon Johnson, uh, Mavericks, Josh Green, um, um, Caleb Houston, Orlando, and just a lot of guys from college like Antoine Davis, Detroit Mercy, Big Cliff, Rutgers. So it's a lot of guys that, that, um, that are really talented. It's, it's tough. Are there advantages to doing all your pre-draft stuff at home? Say it again. Are there advantages to doing all your pre-draft workouts at home? Um, uh, 
it's, I'm at home, so I live, I live with my mom, so that's good. I, I can go home and get a home cooked meal and just be with my mom, hang out with my family. But um, yeah. What are you looking to show NBA personnel and scouts in your pre-draft workouts? Um, that I just, that I can just compete, go hard, give it all I got, uh, just make shots consistently. And uh, when we play three on three, just guard and um, make shots with the hand in my face and, and just be aggressive. The biggest knock on you is people say that you're not a defender. What do you say about that? Um, I think since I've been at Impact for these two and a half months that um, I've just been working on defense, really just everything that I wasn't doing the best at Pepperdine. So um, if that's guarding or just making shots consistently, making shots off the dribble. And um, sometimes I'll just uh, play defense on the pros for 30 minutes straight without even touching the ball. So I've been working on a lot of defense. But what is the biggest misconception about Max Lewis? Um, I'll say what I've been hearing a lot um, after, especially doing the, a lot of interviews this morning with a lot of teams, um, that uh, we didn't have the best season. We only won a couple games this year. So um, I'll say just not winning and being competitive. A lot of teams don't think I'm competitive and, uh, uh, and is a winner. So just to show that when I go to workouts, just to show that and that I have a chip on my shoulder and that I'm, I'm a competitor. Right, as far as like this summer, what you're working on on the court, what is your main focus? Um, this summer, just keeping the ball high when I'm shooting, not bringing it uh, lower than my chest, just keeping it uh, chest up and uh, just my body really just getting stronger. Around how many shots are you are you shooting a day? A day, I say I'm about getting um, from 800 to 900 shots a day. So yeah. And I saw today it's not all set shots. It's off the dribble. It's, it's everything. Creating space. Yeah. It's basically you're you're refining what you already have right. in your game. All right. Fast forward to June 22nd. Right. You hear your name called and you shake the commissioner's hand. What would that mean to you? Uh, man, that would be a real surreal moment. Um, I've been working on that moment for my whole life, just sacrificing and uh, leaving my mom, my family to, um, to get to times like this. So it would really mean a lot, sure. Once again, thanks to Max Lewis and Joe Abunasar for, for hooking up this interview. My next interview in the next episode, actually I have two more interviews. The next one is with Dylan Jones, and after that, I have Tumani Kamar from Dayton. The Dylan Jones interview is a great story about really an underdog that has come out of nowhere. He came from South Carolina to Weber State, was under the radar all season, and he really made a name for himself last week at the NBA Combine. Here are a few snippets from interviews from Dylan and Tumani. All right, so tell me about like your last three weeks. The last three weeks for you has, has pretty much been life changing in a sense. Yeah. Walk me through that whole, the whole process to get here, your path to the draft in a sense. Yeah. Um, well, you know, like the, the, like three weeks ago, I was still in New Jersey working out, um, with our trainer, with the agency, um, you know, just working out, getting better. Then it just picked up quick. You know, I had a workout with Brooklyn on the eighth and I had a workout with Boston on the 11th. Then I came from Boston straight here, and I've been here from the 11th through the, you know, going to be through the 21st. So um, that's kind of been like the crazy schedule that I've been on. But you know, got to be grateful and thankful for the opportunity. You know, a lot of people wish they was doing it, so can't complain. But I think, yeah, that's that's really what my schedule has been over these past couple of weeks, and it's you know, been crazy to think about. You know, hotel living, all of that stuff, but it's a blessing. You ready to get back home? <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say I'm ready to get back home, but I am, you know, ready to at least touch back to Utah, you know, which I, I consider as home. So, yeah, I guess I am ready to get back just to see, like, you know, old faces, keep working out and, you know, obviously just see everybody. All right. So tell me about this experience here at, at the NBA Combine. Oh, it's an amazing experience, man. Great talent, um, being able to, to be surrounded by um, great programs and, and great people looking at you and dissecting your game. and being able to learn so much more about the game of basketball and be able to, to evaluate yourself against uh, some of the best in your class. So amazing experience, a one in a lifetime experience. So 
Uh, not taking it for granted. I'm um, really grateful for being here. Once again, thank you, the listener, for making a Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. And like I said, the next episode will be with Dylan Jones. And following that, the next episode will be an interview with Dayton's Tamani Kamara. Once again, it's Rafael Barlow, and I am out.